in like Thailand. I made a Google Sheets called it budgeting. What? Hello everyone, I hope that you're well. If you missed my last video, I quit my job and I'm going on an around the world trip starting June 15th. But if you want to be updated on that, then you should go watch my last video and then come back and watch this video. This is the second video in my pre-travel series where I'm making a bunch of videos before I go on this trip about planning it, budgeting, what I'm packing, travel vaccines, all that stuff. If you're interested in this type of content, follow along. I'd love to have you here. There's gonna be so many travel vlogs coming up and travel content and I'm so excited, so excited. But in this video, I'm gonna go over how I've planned this big year-long trip. So step number one, figure out where you wanna go. It's harder than it sounds. <laughs> so before getting into the depths of planning this trip, I had a pretty good idea of where I wanted to go. I knew that I wanted to go to South America, Southeast Asia, and Australia. And then this year, my sister actually moved to London. So I was like, well, why don't I try and like make it work so I could go visit her, then I can stay with her for a couple weeks. So I added Europe to the list. And then I was like, well, I'm visiting pretty much all the continents except for Africa, so why don't I just do a tr quick little trip to Morocco and then I can go to all five continents besides Antarctica, obviously. I was like, that would be a good goal to have. If you have no idea where you want to start or if you have no idea where you even want to go, I would really recommend just watching travel vlogs, like watch some Southeast Asia travel vlogs, watch some Europe travel vlogs. South America, watch a bit from all of them and then kind of decide what would be best for you. I have watched so many travel vlogs over the years. Pretty much a lot of the places I want to go are because of travel vlogs. A lot of the bucket list things I want to do are because I've watched travel vlogs. Some of my favorite travel vloggers are Backpacking Bananas, Karen Nate, King Annette, Elena Tabor, Molly Thompson, Laura Reed, Robin Kimberly. Like there's just so many good ones out there. And what I've started doing recently, since I've been really planning more, as I'm watching these travel vlogs, I also have Google Maps open. As they mention things and places I wanna go, search them in Google Maps and I'll save them in a folder. So then when I go back and I look at my map and say I wanna go, I'm like in Colombia, like what do I wanna do there? I have a bunch of saved places of all the places I've been recommended, like restaurants, hostels, beaches, like literally anything. It's just a good visual. And also you can write notes in Google Maps. So when I'm doing this, if the video is showing like this cool beach in like Thailand, I'll write down picturesque beach that looks like it's from Avatar. And then I kind of know and I don't just have this like random beach in my Google Maps. So anyways, I recommend doing that. As I'm watching these travel vlogs, I'm like noting down my bucket list things. And that is pretty much how I've planned my whole trip around my like 10 bucket list items for this trip. Write down all your crazy ideas and then just try and see if you can make it work. That's exactly what I did. So some of the bucket list things on my list are taking a Spanish class in Colombia, hiking Machu Picchu, going to the Galapagos Islands, hot air balloon in Cappadocia, bike trip in Portugal, canyoneering in the Philippines, getting my scuba, scuba, getting my scuba dive license. Um, or qualification. I want to visit Maya Bay in Thailand and I want to go to the Sahara Desert in Morocco. So those are my like one, two, ten. <laughs> Didn't even know there was ten. Ten bucket list things that I want to do on this trip. And so I'm just trying to figure out the itinerary of how I can do all these things. Obviously you have to take into account money because that's probably the key factor in all this because Europe and Australia are way more expensive than South America, Asia, and Africa. So keep that in mind when you're planning, but also depends how long you wanna go for and how much money you wanna spend. I'm gonna make a whole video on budgeting, how I figured out how much money I need to save, how I figured out how much I should spend in each place. So that's gonna be going up in the next couple weeks on my channel in this pre-travel series. So now you have your bucket list, you have an idea of all the places you wanna go, you know how much money you have and how much time you'll be able to spend. So now it's time to actually plan, plan out your trip. So let's get into that. How I did it was all in Google Sheets. I made one Google Sheets and I just put everything in there and it's not pretty, let's just say that. Don't be expecting an aesthetic. <laughs> 
thing because it's not. It's just plain, but it does the trick and yeah. Okay, now that you are in my Google Sheets, I have my laptop down here and I'm gonna go through my Google Sheets, all the sheets that I made um, for planning this trip. And this is pretty much all I did for planning. This is where most of the magic happened. Firstly, I have, I made a Google Sheets, called it Round the World, Trip Plans, Details, Budget, etc. And I have all these different sheets. So the first one that I made was destinations. And this is just where I want to go and for how long. And it's very bare bones, but it's been good for estimating my trip budget. So as you can see on the left here, I just have my, the month, the day, and country, location, and any notes. So, okay, so as you can see, I also put the day of the week because like when I'm in London, my sister's gonna be working, so like the weekends are mostly when we'll be able to hang out. And also when I'm like visiting friends, I'm gonna try and line it up so it's on the weekend when they're not working. But yeah, so Europe's pretty planned because that's where most of the people that I'm gonna be traveling with are there and it's just easier to plan that out. And then after Europe, is very very also like this is very much an estimate <laughs> like i want to go to all these places but pretty much after europe like whatever happens happens we will see so this is all like pretty not planned but i wanted to fill it out so i could put it put these estimates into my budget and then i could know how many days i'm going to be in each place and then have a better idea of how much I'm gonna be spending. So even if it doesn't work out exactly like this, I think it'll still be around my budget. Okay, so that was my destination planning and it's pretty boring. And then I did info about my bucket list countries. This really helped me narrow down my list because originally I was like, oh, I wanna to go to like all these places, Madagascar, Nicaragua, like I wanna go to like all these other places as well. And I was like, I need to narrow down where I wanna go. So I started looking up visa requirements, if you're allowed drones. So I looked up visas and I have a Canadian passport, which I'm very grateful for because most of these countries I can go to without needing a visa. And I can stay there for like 30 to 90 days. So I'm very grateful for that because not a lot of people have that opportunity and it's just something that Canadians, Americans, we should all be aware of. Our passport privilege. Most of these countries, I don't need a visa. I think the only ones are Turkey. I need an e-visa. Most of the countries I can stay in for 90 days without needing a visa. Um, and then I looked up drones because I want to bring my drone and I was like, can I like, am I gonna be able to bring it to all the countries or like half? Cause if it's only half, then there's no point in me bringing it. So I wrote down all the countries I wanted to go to and what the drone rules are. So the red ones are where it's banned. Morocco, Egypt, Madagascar, Nicaragua, and Sri Lanka. So that really was kind of the main factor in like if I was gonna go to those places or not. I'm still gonna go to Morocco, but I think I have an idea for how I'm gonna just like leave my drone in France and then just come and pick it up after Morocco. Um, because if I try to bring it in there, they will take it away from me. So yeah, I'm gonna try and make that work. That really got rid of Egypt, Madagascar, Nicaragua, and Sri Lanka <laughs> off the list because I can't bring my drone. So not going there. <laughs> and then I just also looked up just notes on like their currency and their language. Most of the places I wanna go to speak Spanish. Not most, but a good chunk of them. Um, so I've been practicing Spanish. And then I wrote down the best times of year to visit each place. Like in Europe, June, July, August, September. So I'm gonna be there then. And then South America, I'm gonna be there. I think it was like December. January, February, and then Morocco is gonna be September. See, like this is kind of lining up perfectly with the best times of year. I'm not going to Madagascar, Southeast Asia, I'm gonna be there after. I'm gonna be there like March, yeah, like that. I'm chasing summer, <laughs> mostly trying to go place during the Northern Hemisphere winter, November through February, I'm gonna be in the Southern Hemisphere. Look up the best times to travel to the places you wanna go and then 
try and make that work in that order. The next thing is a bucket list. So like I was saying earlier, my bucket list, I just wrote down some notes about some of the items. It's really not that filled out, but for example, I really wanted to hike Mount Kilimanjaro until I saw those $3,000 and I was like, mm, it's not worth it. I'll just do it another time. <laughs> Um, and so I'll hike Machu Picchu instead. Anyways, I have my bucket list. And then transportation. This is just random notes, like you guys aren't even gonna understand this, but I just wanted, to, this is just kind of where I like compared the cost of getting the EU rail pass and just buying train tickets on their own. And so as you can see, if I do seven days in a month, it's 325 Canadian. And if I were to buy those tickets outright, it's at least 400. I don't even think I filled this out properly, like, but it'd be at least 400. So I'm going to be saving money for sure doing that. Packing list. So I love watching packing videos. I don't know what it is. I just love it. It gets me so hyped up on going places. And so every time I watch a packing video, I'll add notes to my packing list. Like if, for example, someone's like, oh, to keep my shoes clean, I put shower caps over my shoes. I'm like, oh, okay, good idea. Shower caps, I write that down here. Um, then if it's something that I need to buy, I'll like put buy here. Like for example, I need to buy new leggings. So I put buy and then hiking pants buy. And if it's something I'm unsure about, I just put question marks in this column. Yeah, so that's my packing list. And then as I'm going through and I'm like, oh, I need to buy this, I need to buy this. I have another list that's like really similar. That's my to do to buy list. And so here it's got the same columns and I just have been adding things that I need to buy before going. You can see the total, that's so f how much money that's gonna be. It's gonna be sending like $3,000 on shit. But like I said, when I think about it, this is like me buying everything for a whole year. Like I'm not gonna be buying any other things this year, like this is it. And I'm just buying it all at once, which is unfortunate. And like, to be honest, I don't even need half this shit, but it's things that I want and will make my life better. <laughs> so example, like clothes, I'm probably not gonna buy a lot of clothes. I bought some clothes that are gonna be like staples, like I need a new jean shorts, so I got some new ones. Um, I need a new bikini, so I got a bikini. And I'm making a whole video about all these things that I bought for this trip. So once again, <laughs> stay tuned, there's so many good videos. Hopefully good videos that you guys will enjoy, but I've been filming that. So I got, this is all the stuff that I have to buy. Yeah, you know, like I'm kind of a nerd in Excel. Like I love, I love when the formulas work. I love doing good stuff. So as I buy things, I check off this little check beside it and then it will add, a add it up. So here you can see I have like subtotal bought. So I've spent $544 on clothes. What the f that's see and then you come here and you're like I don't need to buy any more clothes because I've already spent $500 and then I have the amount of clothes that I want so I have $200 worth of clothes that I still want so I can be like mm, do I really need to spend that much money <laughs> probably not and then I get into all my budgeting I'm gonna be going way more into detail in my budgeting video so I'm not gonna go into detail here but I'll just go quickly through what each of these are. So this is how I calculated my budget. So I filled in the number of days using that destinations sheet for how many days I estimated to be in each country. And then it comes out with like how much I'm gonna be spending in each place. So Europe, 9,000. Europe's expensive, people. <laughs> um, so I have the amount of days and then I have the daily budget in Canadian for each country. Daily budget in Switzerland is a hundred and five dollars <laughs> but then the daily budget in like Bolivia is 25 yeah so it makes a big difference and then here I have the inputs so I have like the local currency the exchange rate and the place and then I go to this budget. This is what I'm gonna be using every day. I'm gonna actually track how much I spend every day on accommodation, travel, food, activities, and other. And then I'll see if I'm on budget or off. Um, so there's that. And then we have the budget summary. So I have, it uses that sheet that I was just on and it summarizes everything. So it'll tell me how much I spend in England, how much I spend in Greece, Turkey, Germany, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna tell me everything. And then, I have my transportation budget calendar. This is one I made myself. And so this is like what I want to track big flights because I don't think I'm going to be putting the cost of all my big flights in that daily tracker because it'll just skew all the that. So I wanted to track big flights. 
Anyways, that's all my sheets. So once you've planned out all the places you want to go and you like have a good idea of how much money you're spending, all this stuff, there's a bunch of things that you have to do before you go on your trip. So I have a whole video that I'm filming like a vlog where I'm going around and every time I do something for this trip in preparation, I record and tell you about it. So once again, sorry I can't include it all in this video. It'd be like an hour long video, but it's coming. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. <laughs> but some of the things you need to research are your travel vaccines and medications, travel insurance, SIM cards, and make sure you unlock your phone so you can use international SIM cards. Car insurance, like are you gonna be canceling your car insurance? What are you gonna do with that? International driver's license, if you're gonna be renting a car or anything, you should probably figure that out. Getting credit cards, do you have like, a, are you gonna get a travel credit card or are you gonna just keep whatever credit card you have? Go to your doctors, make sure you have all your subscriptions and anything you would need for that long of time. Once again, I'm doing a whole video where I talk about each of those things and what I'm doing for them. Anyways, I hope this helped a little bit. I know it wasn't the most crazy video ever, but it's just how I planned this trip and hopefully you might have gotten something from it. But yeah, I if you're watching this video, maybe you're planning a big trip and I hope you have the best time ever. If you have any specific questions, let me know in the comments below. I would love to help as much as I can. I hope you have a great day. Bye!